Time goes by fast. The 2009 draft class will go down as the Steph Curry class, underrated with tons of talent. Looking at the amount of all stars, that doesn't even include the most influential player of this generation. Blake Griffin, James Harden, DeMar DeRozan, Drew Holiday, and Jeff Teague are already better than most other classes alone. Harden would be the best player in more than half of other classes. Griffin, a top level MVP candidate in his prime, DeRozan aging well, while Holiday made a name for himself, becoming one of the best defensive wings this era, and Jeff Teague retired as champ. All these great players will get overshadowed by the greatness of Curry, but a bunch of lottery picks from the 09 class lasted just a few years in the league and out the NBA for years now. Let's start off with Hashim Tabit, the second pick in the class behind Blake Griffin. Career numbers of an atrocious 2.2 points, 2.7 rebounds, 224 games, 5 unsatisfying lackluster seasons, out the league by 27, and not a failure of a typical number 2 pick the 22 year old expected to produce right away was judged due to the way he looked at 7-3 over 260, limited offensive game, a blocking machine at UConn, a huge miss for Memphis, already having Rudy Gay OG Mayo and Mike Conley didn't want another wing. Although Grit and Grind had a respectable run, adding a Harden or Curry could have made Memphis a multiple time champion. To beat Little Basketball Instincts didn't have a good mentor, will be remembered as one of the worst number 2 picks in NBA history, sent to the G League numerous times after spending a season and a half with Memphis, played in Houston, Portland, and then OKC, at least he was able to make 16 million in earnings. Tariq Evans, the 4th pick of the draft, the player who will be most remembered for winning Rookie of the Year over Steph in a relatively close race, both teams won 25 and 26 games, Evans has the numbers edge of 20.1 points, more rebounds, similar in assists, but Curry the way better shooter, Evans seen as a big point guard, Curry viewed with the better basketball instincts and able to adjust his play with or without the ball, Evans 25% from deep viewed as a red flag, both had amazing highlights, as the years went by, Evans' numbers went down in regress, combined with being on a bad franchise, meaningless basketball, when switched to the two position, his confidence shattered, four seasons with Sacramento, nowhere close to sniffing the playoffs, forced to guard better wings, led to more injuries, hindered his development, an okay time with New Orleans with Anthony Davis, slowed again in the 2016 season, just played 25 games with knee surgery, traded back to Sacramento the following year before signing with Memphis, somewhat rejuvenated himself playing the point guard position, numbers of 19 and a half points, 5 and 5, but never played more than 72 games in the season due to injuries. His last season, 2019 with the Pacers, dismissed for two years for violating the league's anti-drug policy, now re stated will be 33 years old for the 2022-23 season, his time in the league viewed as a huge disappointment, lots of wasted potential, if Evans was drafted elsewhere, some believe his career would have turned out much better. Johnny Flynn, the second point guard the Timberwolves drafted ahead of Steph Curry, couldn't even get an extension, averages of 9.2 points, 3.9 assists on an awful Wolves franchise, the 6 foot guard out of Syracuse, explosive but lacked a jump shot, the exact opposite skill set of Steph, pre-draft scouting, Steph's knock was his lack of quickness. While Flynn, viewed as more athletic, reminded scouts of a D. Rose slash Russell Westbrook type athlete, most drafts did have Curry over Flynn, except for the awful clueless Wolves franchise. Flynn did have a decent rookie season of 13.5 points, 4.5 assists on a 15 win team, underwent hip surgery the summer after his rookie season, limited to 53 games his second year, got benched, career short lived, the ultimate downfall that derailed the rest of his career, traded to Houston and Portland, quickly out the league by 23, numerous injuries, overseas in the ABL, CBA and Europe. Outside of Steph, there were other better options that included DeMar DeRozan, Ty Lawson, Drew Holiday and Jeff T in the guard position over Flynn, a quick rise from a sophomore Albert at Syracuse to falling quickly, not even within a two year span, unfulfilled promise, last played professional ball in 2014. Jordan Hill, the Knicks went panic mode after Curry was picked the spot above them, the franchise hasn't recovered since, taking Arizona's Hill, nothing more than just a role player, a rookie season of 5.2 points, Knicks so impatient, traded him before the deadline of his rookie season to the Rockets, had his most memorable time playing with Kobe Slake. Traded to LA at the 2012 deadline, Hill did average 12 and 8 in the 2015 season. A fan favorite, hustle energy guy, made two more stops with the Pacers and Wolves before playing his final NBA game at age 29. Sadly, ran into trouble with the law. 10 NBA seasons, earned over 32 mil. Being a late bloomer, plus the off-court troubles, made teams want to stay away from signing him. Brandon Jennings. 
The 10th pick literally peaked immediately after stepping onto the hardwood. The number one ranked prospect as a senior in high school absolutely tore Steph's Warriors his seven career game, becoming the youngest ever to drop 55 in the game, deemed as the next Allen Iverson, averages of over 15 and 5 assists, but just shot 37% from the field, made the postseason, but super streaky. Just like the other top picks, Jennings' career derailed by injuries, a broken foot in year two. As time went on, his bad efficiency was evident, took a lot of bad shots, played with Curry's former teammate Monte Ellis, most famous for saying his Bucks would beat the Heat in the 2013 playoffs in six, shot 29% from the field that series, averaged more shot attempts than points per game, traded to a bad franchise in Detroit, his last decent season in 2015, averages of nearly 21.7 assists in 13 games January of 2015, had a 9 game win streak at one point, looked like he was figuring things out, but ruptured his Achilles against his former team, career defining injury, after playing his best ball, traded to the Magic a season later, stints with the Magic, Knicks, hated the triangle offense, never averaged double digits again, 16 minutes per game with the Wizards after, just 23 games his last team with the Bucks. After his injury, averages of 6.9 points, 4.3 assists on 36% shooting, went to China after the 2018 playoffs, lacked efficiency combined with bad defense, turned down 4 years 40 mil in 2013, out the league by 28, 9 seasons in the NBA. Terrence Williams, the 11th pick of the draft picked by the Nets, an athletic 6'6 wing, good speed compared to the likes of Corey Maggetti. Good athlete, 6 unproductive seasons in the league, never played a full 2 consecutive seasons with any same team, peaked his rookie year, had good leaping ability, averages of 8.4 points, 4.5 rebounds off the bench for a bad Nets team, his rookie year his highest averages, spent time with Houston, Sacramento and Boston after 153 total games, his very last draw getting into trouble with the law, arrested for making dress with a firearm, that wasn't the last time we heard from Williams with the law, viewed as the alleged ringleader of the 4 million dollar healthy care fraud scheme including 18 former NBA players, a very bad look, a lot more damaging than anything he'd done in his disappointing career. Viewed as having maturity issues, those off-court distractions a negative sign, that's why he's been out the league since age 25. Gerald Henderson, the 12th pick of the draft out of Duke, father to three-time champ with the Boston Celtic Gerald Henderson, 8 seasons in the league, a solid player for a couple years with Charlotte, career numbers of 11.2 points, 535 games games not bad at all. If you were to guess injuries ruined his career, you guessed right. Three hip surgeries in his career with three different teams, his final blow touring his Achilles can be seen as one of the most average players in the league. Insane hops, played till age 29, officially announced his retirement April 30th, 2019, one of the most forgotten exciting role players in recent times. Tyler Hansborough, the UNC prodigy, had Christian Leitner type vibes, unstoppable in the NCAA, destroyed everybody who's stood his way, a matchup nightmare and national champion, the perfect college career anyone can ask for. Nobody could foresee him playing only 7 seasons in the NBA. The college hall of famer's biggest downfall, the NBA's game changing. With the faster pace, Hemsborough's strength excelling at the half court, didn't have an outside shot at 6'9", his back to the basket game did not fit for any team, couldn't adjust, could have elected to enter the draft earlier at a time where bigs got more opportunity, averaged the career best 11 points mainly off the bench for the 2011 Pacers, was already 24 years old by the time he played his third NBA game, age another factor why he was picked 13th overall, being similar in size to the likes of Carmelo Anthony, Jason Tatum and Paul George, 6'8", around 2'4", all those players can play somewhat point forward and can create for themselves, but Tyler couldn't do any of those things, anything from the perimeter was his liability, didn't have the nastiness like a Draymond Green, or viewed as tough, played for the Raptors and Hornets after Indy, out the league by age 30, played in China, on the bright side, Hamsborough played overseas in Puerto Rico as of 2022, now age 36, his hoops career still appears to be going strong. Earl Clark, the last lottery pick of the draft, a very borderline player, 6 seasons total, 4.4 points, 3 rebounds, stints with the Suns, Magic, Lakers, Cavs, Knicks, and Nets at 6'10 out of Louisville. Former college teammate of Terrence Williams, started with the 2010 Suns, loaded roster that made the conference finals, wasn't needed, became expendable, underdeveloped, out the league by 27, but played overseas the latter part of the 2010s decade, was in Spain as of 2021. What are your thoughts on the 2009 draft class, in a time where the league was still built around half-court offense? 
defenses, the lack of small ball with the combination of low pole centers. Every modern NBA big now needs to be able to shoot the deep ball if they want to extend their careers, unless they're super dominant down low. Steph Curry responsible for changing the game. Career numbers of over 23, 5, and 7. Is he a top 10 player all time? Let me know in the comments below. More championships might be on the way. If nobody else can figure out Golden State's offense and chemistry, or the 2023 Warriors the favorite to repeat, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I love all of you. See you next time.